Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As I've promised, I'll talk about chilling test. In my previous video, I've talked about vitamin B12 deficiency. And chilling test was one of the methods used to diagnose B12 deficiency. So, do we use it anymore? No. Why? There are some limitations to this test. However, it's a very good board question because it has a lot of like mechanisms and pathophysiology and if you understand Schilling test, that means that you understand B12 absorption, which is a huge deal for the boards and for you to understand pernicious anemia as well as megaloblastic anemia. So in brief, Schilling test is giving the patient radioactive B12 okay and then measure the B12 in the urine to see if this patient is absorbing B12 or not so let's get started so if you haven't already watched my last video on B12 deficiency I strongly encourage you in the strongest possible words to go ahead and watch my previous video first because you will never understand anything if you have not Anyways, B12 deficiency has many steps as I have described in my last video. So, you know all of them. Let's add a couple more. So, we have different causes of B12 deficiency. Dietary deficiency, salivary gland disease, pernicious anemia, pancreatitis, ileal disease or resection. Also, we have bacterial overgrowth. If you have many awesome bacteria here in the gut, they are eating your vitamin B12, so you are not absorbing any B12. This is called bacterial overgrowth. Sometimes it's called small intestine bacterial overgrowth or small bowel bacterial overgrowth syndrome whatever other causes of b12 deficiency will include liver disease why is that because once you are here in the bloodstream b12 has two destinations either to go to cells to be utilized or go to the liver to be stored for years so liver disease will cause kind of vitamin b12 deficiency because the store is malfunctioning it's like if you are um, like as CEO of the company you have a lot of inventory however the place where you store your inventory is damaged you will lose a lot of money this is no brainer so now we have seven different causes of B12 deficiency so bacterial overgrowth will be six liver disease will be seven so here comes our hero the Schilling test we know that it's probably B12 deficiency, but why? Is it pernicious anemia? Is it diet? Is it the bacterial overgrowth? Is it malabsorption syndrome? Or the famous fish tapeworm Diphilobothrium latum? Or liver disease? Which one? Schilling test kind of gives us an idea of which one is the cause or whether the patient has B12 deficiency or not. So, do you have B12 deficiency? And if so, why? So, bear with me. Many steps for the Schilling test. First, we give oral vitamin B12 plus intramuscular. Which one will be absorbed more quickly? Answer, intramuscular, of course. The intramuscular B12 will go to the bloodstream. It will saturate all of your transcobalamin receptor. So all of them are being used. I have no more transcobalamin to carry any more B12. So the oral one has only one destination, to end up in the urine. Why? Because there are no more receptors to carry it through the bloodstream so it will end up in the kidney when it's bound to transcobalamin it cannot be filtered when it's free it will go to the urine which you will pee so when it's free you will pee when it's bound 
its sound. Uh, anyway, this is the first step. I saturated all of my receptors and I gave oral B12. Let's measure the urine B12 because it's radioactive, so it shines. And let's measure it. If it's 10% or more, that's okay in the first 24 hours. This patient um, is either normal or is not eating enough B12 in the diet. So it's either normal or dietary problem, which is easy to fix. Just make him eat more B12 or give it to him intramuscularly. Okay, if it's less than 10%, oh, there is a problem. Let's go to step number two. I will give them the B12 plus the intrinsic factor. What if the result in the urine normalize and it's now more than 10%? So it increased. First step, it was less than 10%. Second step, it's increasing. This means I'm fixing the issue. What's the issue? Intrinsic factor deficiency, i.e. pernicious anemia. Wow, problem solved. This patient has B12 deficiency due to pernicious anemia. Done. What if the result is still less than 10%? Let's go to the third step. B12 plus antibiotics. Why? I would like to destroy these fancy bugs. What if giving B12 plus antibiotics normalize the urine value of B12? Done. I've diagnosed this patient has B12 deficiency due to bacterial overgrowth syndrome. Okay, still did not normalize. Let's go to the next step. B12 plus, I'm sorry, pancreatic enzymes such as protease or the pancreatic secretions. What if it normalized and it's now more than 10%? So this patient has chronic pancreatitis. The pancreas is damaged and demolished and in a very bad shape. So in summary, if the first step was normal, it's either a normal patient or a dietary deficiency. If the first step was decreased so we have less cobalamin in the urine however the second step normalized it this is pernicious anemia if both first step and second step yield less b12 in the urine this is malabsorption could be bugs could be pancreatic enzyme deficiency could be ileal resection crohn's disease fish tapeworm so this um, test kind of has some limitation but pernicious anemia easily diagnosed with this test also um, bacterial overgrowth will be like just like that so this was the shilling test what are the limitations of the shilling test it's expensive radioactive elements um, sometimes the radioactive cobalamin is not available time consuming i have to do step one wait 24 hours to collect the urine then step two then step three and don't forget treatment makes much more sense if you suspect this patient is having b12 deficiency and you give him some nice intramuscular b12 deficiency and now he's fine well done no worries you don't have to do this stupid shilling test okay but for board questions um, it's probably gonna be the wrong answer so if it says like this patient has anemia symptoms neurological symptoms which of the following is the um, best step best next step in management probably give him intramuscular shot of b12 shilling test will likely be the wrong answer why as you know this and for the boards always think cheap if you have two choices, they look equally plausible. One of them is very expensive, like radiologic stuff and like MRI or CT and geography or whatever. And another step is very cheap. 
usually the answer is the cheaper option. They would like you to think cheap first instead of just ordering a bunch of tests. Now, question of the day. Which famous class of medication can cause bacterial overgrowth syndrome? Please let me know in the comments. And if this is the 12th question, to get the previous ones, go to my Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash medicosis. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Keep studying.